It's funny how no matter how many years go by, so many elements of the NFL draft cycle, year in and year out, pretty much stay consistently the same. And one of those patterns that consistently stays the same, you see it every year, it never fails, it never changes, is you'll have a couple of guys that head into their last college football season and they're being mocked in top fives and top tens and pretty much everybody's way too early mock drafts. There's all this thought that they're these big time talents, they're elite special type of guys, and they seem like a slam dunk to be taken really, really high. But then as the season progresses, uh, you maybe start to study the film and you realize uh, that what you were doing was more so projecting the, the reality of who they actually are and that they don't really measure up to the hype. And sometimes they have other concerns that kind of get factored in and you realize when you look back a year later how crazy and ridiculous it was that you had this guy in this type of position to begin with. And you see this every year. Uh, two years ago it was Randy Gregory. Um, last year it was Robert Kemdichie. And I think this year it's Malik McDowell. One of those type of guys that in theory you can see it on film at times. You see the ability to dominate. You see some special physical traits. But there are concerns in the game. There are certain areas where they're really lacking. And then you have some other off the field type of baggage that really has you concerned about whether or not the guy is suited uh, to play at the NFL level. But when you look at Malik McDowell, first thing that stands out to you, this dude looks like a freaking beast, a monster. Six foot six, 275 pounds. He's got great height and great length, especially if you're going to play him at a defensive end position, especially in a 3-4, but I think he could also potentially play in a 4-3. It's that long wingspan that really allows him, if he's right, to be able to keep blockers out of his core. Um, he has okay weight. He will need to add some muscle, I think, especially if he's going to play some inside, in particular if you're going to play him as a 3-4 defensive end. But when you look at that physical package of height and length, you, you want to sink your teeth into that because, you know, that that's just God-given, so to speak. You know, those type of guys don't grow on trees, especially when you look at Malik McDonald on film and you see a guy with this type of athleticism burst explosiveness. He is incredibly explosive for a dude of that size. I mean, just freaky explosiveness on film. Pretty good snap anticipation and recognition skills. A very, very good quick first steps. And, and what's really impressive for a guy of that type of size and that type of length, and you don't always see this out of guys like this, even if they are explosive linear in a straight-ahead fashion, is change of pace and change of direction skills uh, being up to snuff. And in his case, his change of direction, change of pace skills are really, really good. Really, really top-notch for a guy of this size, this height, this length which indicates that he has the type of athleticism to potentially be able to make plays all over the place. So you start there with McDowell, and you say, this guy passes the eyeball test. He's got that kind of freak of nature uh, type of look to him. And he plays really, really hard, too. I will give him that. I consistently felt like he put forth good effort on film. I thought his effort as a pass rusher was really good. I thought his effort in pursuit was actually um, way above what I thought it was going to be. I, I thought he was actually really, really good in pursuit. Um, he hustles relatively consistently, and, and I like that. To me, you know, it's one of those things when you talk about hustle and effort and motor. It's something that every player should have, but every player does not have. And it is something that for defensive players particularly – carries greater weight than some of the other areas because to me, will can overcome skill. Will and a greater will can overcome a greater lack of skill to a certain degree. And that's the way I look at it. If you got that great athlete that also has tremendous will, then, you know, potentially a star is made. But you look at his height, his length, his explosiveness as an athlete, and the consistent hustle that he plays with. And you look at this dude and you feel like you understand why he was so highly thought of and so highly rated heading into the 2016 college football season. You can see elements of what looks like a top 20, top 10 type of talent. You really do from an athletic and hustle standpoint. But unfortunately, that's not all it takes to be able to play and play at a high level in the NFL. And when I look at McDowell, I see a lot that is lacking. And 
I don't understand why there are still some people that are mocking this guy in the first round. I just don't. He is too far from a finished product, even when you factor in the size and the athleticism and the hustle. He's got a lot of flaws, and there are a lot of other questions in terms of his football character, his own individual character. Um, no way is this due to first-round talent. The first thing, for a dude that is that long and that big, he's not very strong whatsoever. He lacks the strength and the muscle to hold up at the point of attack. To me, I saw a guy that was consistently able to be driven off of his spot, whether he lined up inside, whether he lined up outside. It didn't really matter. And in particular, what's concerning is that lack of lower body strength. He didn't really anchor well in the running game. He got pushed back relatively consistently. Um, now, as a run defender, he's got some solid form as a tackler. And like I say, he's got very good athleticism and effort in pursuit. But the problem is, is he's a guy that if you get your hands on him, you could just eliminate him. You can push him back. You can push him to wherever you want to go. He just doesn't anchor and hold the edge, hold the point of attack very well. And even as a pass rusher, uh, there's not enough sack or pressure production for a player of his size. You look at the athleticism, you look at the tangible things that you do see, and you think that this guy could be a great pass rusher. And in theory, he could be. But he needs a lot of work in terms of how to use his hands. Uh, sometimes he's able to use them and just flat out lay people. But if somebody gets their hands on him, he lacks a secondary pass rush moves, a rip move, swim move, bull rush move. Uh, to be able to shed the blockers. Uh, for a guy of his size and length especially, it's impressive that he's able to bend the edge as well as he is. Uh, but again, you know, how much is he going to be able to do that at the NFL level? And in general, at Michigan State, there wasn't enough sack production. And you could say, well, sacks can be an overrated statistic. They can be. And at times he had disruptive moments, but at times you got to be able to finish plays too. And just not nearly enough consistent pressure, enough consistent pass rush production in my mind to be able to project this guy as a big-time interior pass rush type of threat at the NFL level. In large part because of just how horrible he is in terms of holding his pad level and getting leverage. He hasn't learned how to use his length to his advantage. Too often when he comes out of his three-point stance, he gets straight up into almost vertical, which is it's challenging enough to maintain good pad level and leverage when you're six foot six on the football field. Now you shoot up to basically vertical all the time. I mean, these offensive linemen are going to get up under you and they're just going to be able to roller skate you wherever the hell they want to. I mean, too often he has horrible balance. He gets pancaked a lot, gets off balance a lot to the point where the offensive lineman doesn't even really have to block him that much. He just kind of guides him, and Malik McDowell is doing the face plant. In fact, this dude ended up on the ground so damn much in 2016, and he got pancaked in particular so much in 2016. In an era of sports where I feel like great nicknames are missing and lacking, I've got one for Malik McDowell, and it's McGriddle. He's a pancake sandwich. He consistently gets pancaked way too damn much for a guy of his size and athletic ability. It just should not be happening this often, and it does. And that's why I call him McGriddle. I think this dude is massively overrated. I don't even see from McGriddle great football awareness, great football instincts. Um, you know, it's one of these things where if he doesn't get there, he doesn't get his hands up uh, to try and get into the passing lane. Uh, he really struggles a lot to me with play recognition. You, you oftentimes you see on film where he's still trying to get to the quarterback, and all the while the running back's already five yards down the field. I mean, so you can see a lot of that is lacking. And then you talk about a guy that missed a few games in 2016 with an ankle injury, shows sporadic flashes of uh, awesome, where he, he would have a big play, and you're like, wow, this dude could be something. And there's just long periods of irrelevance, inconsistency, and frankly, pathetic production. On top of that, there are major concerns about his work ethic, his attitude, his maturity, his locker room presence. There's a lot of reports that his Michigan State teammates didn't like him very much. A lot of reports they didn't interview very well at the Combine. You know, and you see a guy, frankly, that didn't make very much in the way of progression uh, from 2015 to 2016, which again, I think speaks to potentially some major concerns about his work ethic and the lack of strength. Again, how hard does he want to hit the weight room? How much does he actually want to be an NFL player? I think McGriddle has talent. 
but this dude is an overrated bust of period. This first round pick crap is just that to me, hot garbage. In terms of an NFL comparison, the one that most directly makes sense to me is a guy who I had a fourth round grade on last year because I thought he was a second round talent and probably an undrafted free agent in terms of off the field and character and such. But he ended up going in round one anyways, and that was Robert Kemdichi. Now, this was a guy that was mocked all year for the most part in 2015 to be a guy going in the top five, maybe the top ten. And then the reality came around, and he was an entirely different dude. Part of the thing was this was a guy that had uh, incredible athleticism and explosiveness. But he struggled to finish plays. Uh, he had poor leverage. Um, long periods where he just really wasn't much of a factor whatsoever. It was great that he penetrated a lot, but he didn't do anything with it. Then you had all the off-the-field concerns and so on. Um, he still got drafted in the first round, and who knows, at the tail end of round one, Malik McDowell, somebody may take a chance. But you saw Kendichi just wasn't mentally, emotionally ready for the NFL in 2016, similar to how I don't think McGriddle is going to be quite ready in 2017. I've got a fourth-round grade on the dude, and I think that's fair. Based off of what you saw in film in 2016, especially, again, some of the concerns about the off the off the field, in the locker room type of stuff, the lack of work ethic has to be concerning. You know, when I graded durability and dependability, looking at it now, I probably was way too generous in the damn grade that I did give him. Again, this dude could end up proving me wrong and getting to the NFL and figuring it out. But the simple fact of the matter is, McGriddle needs a lot of work, a whole hell of a lot of work. And for the people that are going to sit there and think that he's a first-round pick, I sit there and ask, what the fuck film were you watching? This dude is not that level of talent. In fact, at this moment in time, he's nowhere close.